Hi, everybody. I'm Laurie Cadden. And we are at the beautiful TCMC once again for the fourth installment of Lackawanna County Medical Society's Public Health Education Series. And I said number four. We've already done three, that means. We have two lucky candidates with us here today who are going to tell you about, as I told you at the end of last time, arthritis. I say candidates because they had a volunteer and they're here. Hey, we're going to do this. No, really. They're two great guys. I just met them and already you're great guys. Perfect. OK? We have down to my far right, Mr. D Mr. Dr. Chad or Mr. <laughs> Chad Walker. And then right here close to me is Dr. Jeff Gillette. And they're both with Professional Orthopedic Associates on Olive Street, as we said. Olive Street. And they're here to talk to you and to help us better understand arthritis, what some of the symptoms are, what maybe, I don't know, if what causes it, if we really know. All the different types there are, you hear them, and how to kind of figure out what means what, what it is, what you can do, and why you might get arthritis. And I can tell you guys right from the beginning that my, my nana, who was 92 when she died six years ago, mm -hmm. she blamed everything on arthritis. She would say, it's arthritis, my fingers are this, and why do you have arthritis? Do you know how I used to have to clean clothes on a washboard exactly. and stick my hands in freezing? What, does, is that true? Well, it's true to a point. Um, a lot of times it's wear and tear on your joints that can kind of lead to some arthritis. Okay. Um, and, you know, overuse and, you know, years of abuse and lots of miles on the tires, as I say, sometimes really kind of can lead to that in the long term. So then what is arthritis actually? So arthritis is kind of a blanket term for anything that's causing joint pain or inflammation or the symptom of joint pain or inflammation. So it encompasses a whole lot of things, but basically when somebody says they have arthritis, it means they have joint pain. And is arthritis only in a joint? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what about your, is this considered a joint or not? It is. It is. So can you get it there? You yes. can. I think I have it because I, I haven't been talking <laughs> enough. <laughs> so, but okay, that's really what I want to say. I do have TMJ, bilateral. So my point is, if I, the more I talk and I don't laugh, I do talk a lot. It feels better to do that. Is that true? The more you use a joint or your, does that help at all or not? Typically, one of the main symptoms that comes along with arthritis is stiffness. Okay. You know, um, so when people always say, you know, first thing they get up in the morning, their joints feel stiff, they're achy, they're sore, and then once they kind of get Move. things lubed up and get them moving a little bit, they start to, you know, work that out and starts to feel a little bit better. So that's the same thing that you're feeling up here. That's a little bit of arthritis there, and then as you work out that stiffness and get that jaw moving, it starts to feel a little bit better. So that happens in any joint then. Okay, I really wasn't sure that could happen. So tell me the possible, when you said, I know you were kidding sort of, but when you said lubed up, what actually, is there a lubricant? What does work in the joints? What keeps it? healthy let's put it that way your, your joints have fluid in them that allows everything to kind of move smoothly together so uh, so you can have that nice gliding motion that's not painful um, so it's starting to get that moving around a little bit to loosen things up that can help decrease some of that you know that stiffness especially in the mornings when people first get up um, but getting them moving a little bit stretching out those muscles uh, and, and tends to um, loosen things up and get it feeling better so when, when, you, when someone's inflamed, their area is inflamed, a joint, is, is that the fluid that's built up, like some inflammation? Can, what is it that actually becomes inflamed? It can be very different things. So, okay. you know, classic wear and tear arthritis where you're getting bone on bone, you've probably heard that term. Mm -hmm. that, that inflammation is different. That's more mechanical rubbing. Uh, things like rheumatoid arthritis, your joint lining is actually inflamed. So that we call that synovitis, where the lining of the joint is actually getting congested with inflammatory molecules that are producing more fluid. So it's just a different type of fluid than your normal joint fluid. So when someone has bone on bone, what actually happened for that to take place? An injury or aging? What, what is that? So it can, be, it can be an injury that can lead to it. Uh, it could just be your normal wear and tear o over the years like we talked about. But basically the cushioning of your joint, the, you know, the padding that's basically on the ends of the bones that allows everything to, to move smoothly has worn away. So and when you wear away that cartilage that's on the end of the bone that acts like a buffer, then you're down to just rough, hard bone rubbing against each other, and that's why it's pretty painful. And so that's the difference with the two. So tell me then, what are some of the, these, this, the um, symptoms that might 
and we say might, indicate arthritis. Because does somebody just automatically come into you and say, hey guys, I have this and this and I think it's arthritis. Is it mostly, is mostly that the case? Usually pain and stiffness are the reasons people are complaining. So you can have, technically you could have arthritis in a joint, like changes on imaging that shows wear and tear changes to the joint, but that might not hurt. But you usually don't go and complain to your doctor about a change on the x-ray. You're saying, you know, I wake up, I'm stiff, or, you know, this is really starting to hurt after I'm standing doing something for more than 30 minutes, my back starts to hurt or my knees are starting to hurt. So it's the symptoms that really guide us in our treatment and diagnosis. And is it mostly older people or is it more occupational or is it, are you seeing more now a younger cr group of people who think they have or possibly do have? Yeah, I, I think it really ranges. Um, you know, you see young people and, that can develop arthritis, especially people who do a lot of things like long distance running mm -hmm. uh, that can really wear at your joints. Um, and, uh, but any, anywhere through the, through the spectrum of people who have had injuries um, can lead to arthritis earlier in life. Typically arthritis is your older patients, but that doesn't mean a young person can't have it. And is there sort of a, there's really no cure for it. So what do you actually do? Like if someone comes in and says, I have low back pain, bur bursitis, what is bursitis? So bur bursitis is basically inflammation of the cushioning pouches where the bones or the muscles and ligaments attach to the bone. So is that a bursa? Is that a bursa, what that, okay. yes. so that's so what inflammation is the itis part I of that. Get it. So mm -hmm. bursitis is inflamed bursa. Okay. Which can be painful. You know, a lot of people who are complaining of hip pain and they point to the outside of their hip or thigh, that's not their hip and that's more bursitis. So okay. those are the kind of questions we ask when somebody says says my hip hurts. Well, you know, where is it? Is it your low back that you're considering your hip? Is it is it the, the thigh area, is it the groin area? So the, those are the questions you'll be asked if you go to your doctor and say, my hip hurts. So those are then the things that d distinguish whether it is actual arthritis or something else. It helps. And does that by the area of joint work or then our MRIs and all these other diagnostic t type things, are they used then to determine all this stuff? How do you say to someone you have rheumatoid arthritis or you have psoriatic arthritis? How does that happen? I'll take this yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, it's a, such a, a broad disease spectrum that the, the, the first thing you need to figure out is, is, is kind of how you're going to approach it. And that's usually a good H&P or history and physical. So you start asking symptoms to distinguish, is it more of an inflammatory arthritis? And inflammatory arthritis are things like rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. So the big fancy things you don't hear much about, those are different than your everyday mechanical injury or osteoarthritis, wear and tear arthritis. So depending on where your symptoms fall, that'll direct are you gonna get imaging first? Did you have an injury? Are they worried about fracture? Or is it more inflammatory stuff? Are you a young person that has puffy, swollen joints that would prompt somebody like me to do more blood work than imaging? So blood work can determine that, obviously. Not 100%, no, so there's no diagnostic blood test okay. for arthritis. What about then, as we were talking earlier about psoriatic arthri arthritis, it goes, is, is psoriasis, off, that is part of it, right? I mean, is, does somebody automatically have that who does, or how no. does that mm -hmm. link happen? So everyone gets arthritis. Everyone's yeah. going to get wear and tear changes to their joints. The thing with psoriatic arthritis, the skin disease, is an uh, autoimmune process. Right. About a third of patients with skin disease will develop joint disease, but not everyone with skin disease develops the joint disease. And some people get the skin disease after the joint disease. So it's really just a lot of Do they know why, we, though? I mean, what's no. the correlation? No, not determined yet? or. So, you know, there's a genetic component to all types of arthritis. Um, some there's more of a predisposition than others, but there is no known cause for the autoimmune forms of arthritis. You know, osteoarthritis is, is generally, you could attribute to something, whether it's age or injury. Right, like an old, like an old football injury or something. Mm -hmm. So how, do you find that more osteo and then it's less on the other type of the autoimmune arthritis? Or is it pretty much equal? 
I think you tend to see more osteoarthritis. I, I personally see more osteoarthritis. Um, obviously, Dr. Walker sees more rheumatoid arthritis because that's his, uh, you know, specialty. Um, but I think the average population has more osteoarthritis just because every person gets general wear and tear eventually. Um, you know, every joint in your body is, you know, open to it, and um, so every person develops, you know, some form of osteoarthritis. Um, I think it's a smaller subset of the population that develops the inflammatory arthritis problems. So then we were defining some of these. So then rheumatoid arthritis, or RA as they say, um, that you can e actually even have deformities in your jo your joints due to that, right? Or is that an all form of arthritis? In my grandmother's case, she would tell you it's, it's everything. But is that true? All forms of arthritis can cause joint deformity. Mm -hmm. uh, the deformities are different. So you think like we've been talking about the wear and tear changes. That, that's more mechanical grinding bone on bone. With the inflammatory stuff, you actually start seeing erosions or almost bite marks out of the joints where the inflammation is destroying the joint. So it's not a wear down, it's actually your body is attacking the joints. And that looks different on x-ray. So imaging can definitely tell us the difference between somebody that's got a sore knuckle joint that, that looks different if it's osteoarthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis. But the actual then, the deformity, that is caused by the body attacking itself to make the changes in the, in the joint, as you were saying, the move that it should be. That, is that what it is then? That's what causes that? Yeah. Basically, the immune system is recognizing something in yourself as, as a foreign, foreign object, mm -hmm. and it causes inflammation. That inflammation is what causes the erosions. And typically, any, any type of arthritis can have joint deformity. Uh, the rheumatoid arthritis and the inflammatory arthritis tends to be a little bit more severe in the deformity uh, um, characters of it. But any type of arthritis can really have deformity as that joint sort of breaks down and loses its natural structure. Um, even your uh, you know, standard run-of-the-mill osteoarthritis um, can, can get some deformity. But rheumatoid just tends to be a little bit more severe um, than, the, uh, than the others. So what is then infectious arthritis? Infectious arthritis is, you know, it's pretty rare. I've to, never heard of that. To have that, yeah, it's uh, it's when somebody, you know, literally gets an infection in their joint, um, and that's pretty much a, a an emergency that you know we we only see in the hospitals and in the emergency department where you know for whatever reason either they had a cut that got you know uh, bacteria into into that joint or it got into the joint through their through their bloodstream from an infection elsewhere, uh, and that's really a, an emergency that um, you know needs to be treated surgically because that infection in there destroys the joint quickly. Um, you know, that's pretty rare that we see that where somebody who, um, who hasn't had a joint replacement or something like that develops it, an infection just out of nowhere. Um, it does happen rarely um, and when we see that, you know, we treat it aggressively in the operating room to control that infection and prevent the joint from kind of being damaged and being lost. And if you would, I don't know which one will take this one, but what about gout? What is that? What causes it? It's painful from what I hear. Mm -hmm. Is it only in the toe? Is it, what, what is it? And give me some scoop on that. So gout and what belongs is it? to a family of arthritis we call crystalline arthritis. So gout is um, basically uric acid is produced in the body and either you're not peeing out enough of it or you're making too much of it and it can accumulate in any joint in the body. You can get an attack where those crystals basically cause inflammation in the joint um, and it's extremely painful. So usually people know when they get gout, there's usually a trigger that they can recognize. A lot of people know it's a dietary trigger or alcohol that they do drink or um, you know some kind of seafood. There's a lot of triggers out there for gout. Um, but that's usually an acute self limited so it comes on it's terrible and, it, and it'll go, go away. away but it, it doesn't um, but have it can recur so there but are, does it have residual effect or is it just that it's reoccurring and it goes it can I, again it can destroy joints um, oh. people can get deposits that almost look like white bumps right yes um, but there's treatments to prevent that from happening because everybody talks about it and you, and and I hear it only in the toe. I didn't realize it could be. Why is that so common? Then let's put it that way. Why is the toe? I don't think anybody knows. Um, that's but just it a, is, right? Is that the it, most it common is. area? It, it tends to be a little bit more common than the other joints. Probably the the, the big toe, most specifically. Right, right. Um, and then the uh, the knee is probably the next most common after that. Um, why those joints are more more affected by gout than the other ones? Nobody really knows. It's just bad luck. Gout does tend to like joints that already have arthritis in it. So an injured joint tends to. Have um, get a flare of gout over a normal 
And so gout can be caused by, like you were saying, I hear it mostly with alcohol consumption, but it can be uh, uh, many other things then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so what about um, um, bone spurs? Because I, when I was reading my notes before, I was making sure I, those other big words that I asked her, I don't know. But bone spurs, how are they caused? Is that injury related? Is it something that just grows up? What, what does it actually mean? So bone spurs are typically the, your body responding to the arthritis. So oh. a, as you, know, you get breakdown of the joint and you lose that cushioning that we talked about, your body responds by building extra bone to kind of help support things a little bit better. Um, and so you get these bone spurs, and they could actually lead to more pain and more inflammation, uh, but they're usually a product of the, of the arthritis itself. I didn't realize that. So what about, now I hear this, again, I'm just trying to put what I hear. In your feet, you get that, or the heel. Yeah. Is that a common place for that? Uh, a to heel spur is a, a little bit different. Okay, so it's um, not the same and thing. And that's associated with what's called plantar fasciitis, where you, and you get it's very painful on the bottom of your foot there. Uh, typically, a little bit be different because that's not uh, it's outside of a joint, um, but right. it's a little spur of bone that you know causes a quite a bit amount of pain. Okay, so tell everybody if you would, guys, who was at risk of developing arthritis. Now, we know some of the reasons you were saying earlier is that it could be hereditary. Mm -hmm. Obviously, is that the most significant risk factor is if your parents have it, maybe you do or you will? It depends on the type, honestly. Okay. Everyone's so at risk. So which type is not, which one is more prevalent, prevalent to be, like that word I just made up, to be um, uh, f uh, familial? Uh, so rheumatoid arthritis is probably the most common autoimmune or uh, inflammatory arthritis. Um, so that it's, it's about 30% genes, the rest no one knows. So there's a lot of hypothesis. Is it, is it in something in the environment? We know smoking can trigger rheumatoid arthritis in the right people. Um, so genetics are part of it and it, it, I would never go by genes to make the diagnosis. It's usually by history. And what about gender then? I see ge that, that in my notes. So is who's more, does, is it more female? Depends on the age group. Okay, so, so what is that? Younger men tend to have more mechanical injuries. Uh, younger women tend to have more inflammatory arthritis. Uh, so an autoimmune disease is more common in younger females than it is in men. Uh, but osteoarthritis is more common in younger men than it is females. How do you keep all this stuff straight? It takes a while. That's why you went to school so long. Okay, so then if you obviously then too, you said if you had a a, a, um, a prior injury, that's obviously that kind of it kind of. I think it, I, you can imagine these little things going in. Oh, this is injured. We're going right after it. I mean, that's sort of what happens, right? It opens it up for for that type of. Um, yeah, it create, whatever. It creates a weak spot. There when you, you when go, you have weakness. Injury, it creates yeah. a weak spot in that joint, which is then further susceptible to further injury, which kind of creates the cycle where it just kind of worsens and worsens. And so then why does obesity have to do? I know probably the joints, it's hard if you have extra weight. on. Is that the real reason, or is there some other significant reason to that? It's exactly that. It's, you know, increased, uh, increased weight. Uh, leads to increased wear and tear, uh, and just that uh, you know additional pounding on those joints every day just takes its toll after a while. Okay, so that would be the whole reason. All right, so we talked earlier. I said I think I mentioned this, and maybe we talked before. So if I'm repeating myself, but we talked about a cure. I think I said that. W what? W how are we looking at that? What do What do you guys think the long long term effect? You guys have been doing this for a few years now. You're in a, a group of with a group of docs who've been around for a long time, doing a lot of good work. In, in this, the field of orthopedics. So how, how, what, do you, what do you get from all this? What do you think about all this arthritis? And another, to, just to um, piggyback on that, is it seems as though arthritis is much more, um, AR or RA is much more out there than it was before, or maybe pharmaceutical companies are just spending more money on it. But what, why is that? Uh, I think there's, there's lots of treatments available for arthritis. Um, there's a lot of conservative treatments that are available, which uh, are used to manage the, the course of the disease, especially you know the uh, inflammatory arthropathies that Dr. Walker tends to treat, um, and he can talk about that a little bit. Um, 
there's medications and things to do that we can help manage the arthritis, but the majority of arthritis doesn't have a cure. There's no magic pill we could take that you know can get rid of it completely, so it goes away, never comes back. The only cure we have for any type of arthritis is really a joint replacement, where you're removing the arthritic surfaces completely and you're replacing that with a, a prosthesis to allow that joint to function again like normal. That's really, really only cure if you can call it that, um, but it's removing the joint and replacing it with something so they can function appropriately. Can it come back on, uh, a, on a replacement? It cannot. No? You know, one, once the Because we remove the entire joint surface um, and, and replace it, and you know that's for the main joints that we do that for, our knees, hips, and shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, and you remove the entire, joint, the entire joint surface, and so there's nothing left to become arthritic. Okay. So that is then, in the end, that, that becomes a cure in a way, right? Because Absolutely. if you can, so is that why then you have people who opt for these type of, I mean, and I want your opinion on this, because so many people say, if you're having your knees done, do them at the same time. Is that true? Is that just a personal opinion? Does it differ by doctor? What is it? Yeah, so, um, in my opinion, um, you know, having them both done at the same time, it has to be the, really the perfect patient for it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who is young and healthy without any other medical problems and really understands what they're getting themselves into. It's, you know, one Tough. knee replacement by itself is a big surgery. Uh, right. Having both done at the same time is a big deal. Um, and, it, it, you know, it does slightly increase your risk for complications. So that's a discussion I have with my patients, make sure they understand kind of uh, what they're getting into. Um, and I, I try to shy them away from that if, uh, if it comes to it. Um, but if I have the right patient who's the great candidate for it, um, certainly it can kind of get them back on their feet uh, quicker. Okay. And then on your, uh, from your end, doctor, from the, as, as Dr. Gillette was saying, your, the inflammatory type things, what do you think about all so that? So it's, it's different. Um, you know, the, the disease paths are different for what I treat versus what orthopedics treats. So, you know, the drugs that I use tend to target the immune system because that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we look for in rheumatology is to put the, the inflammation in, or the disease into remission. So our drugs, there is no known cure. People can go into remission and remain off medications, but really it's aggressive early treatment to prevent those joint damage, the destructions that we talked about. Because once you get an erosion from something like rheumatoid, it doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you don't rebuild that. You can get bone spurs and everything else, but you don't rebuild the normal structure of that joint. So treatment for the autoimmune things is really to target the disease and try to control it. So then why um, is, I'm going to say, I always mess it up, is it mech, mech, the cancer drug? Uh, Methotrexate. Yes. Why is that used for, for psoriatic or RA? What, why does that work? Because it's the immune system? <laughs> we don't know why it works. That's uh, but the it interesting does, right? thing. It does yeah. work. Um, it's, it's kind of one of those things that um, with a lot of these autoimmune diseases, there was a couple options. like. 20 years ago, high-dose aspirin was still used and gold, and they, there was so much toxicity from the medications that it almost wasn't worth some patients taking it, and it really didn't do much to stop the joint destruction. Um, methotrexate was found to work, and now it's kind of the gold standard, so all the new medicines out there are basically compared against that, um, and it, it does work very well. Uh, it sounds like a scary medicine, but uh, I tell people the disease is a scary thing, too, so yeah. we, we do take it seriously, and we do choose aggressive therapy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing how a drug, like other types of drugs, like what about like an antidepressant uh, or an, an anti-inflammatory? Are those things used then with whichever type of arthritis? And does that help someone, like an aspirin or uh, what, um, naproxen or something? Does that work? Yeah, an anti-inflammatories are one of our you know staples that we use um, just because decreasing the inflammation mm -hmm. in the joints, the joint lining itself, um, you know, really can help people with their pain. Um, so uh, absolutely, anti-inflammatories are, are one of the medicines that we rely heavily on. So then, what would you both say? I'm going to give both of you a chance at that. What would you both say were some of the things that you feel could prevent uh, or keep it in check? Let's see, because if you already have it, what are the best things you could do for yourself as a patient or trying to prevent this from taking place? 
Yeah, so the, the things that I, I tell my patients that uh, really work best, um, if my patient's overweight, you know, recommend some weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, I think that makes a huge difference, and, and it doesn't have to be a, a huge amount. Any right. amount that you can lose, you know, makes a big difference on your joints. Um, you know, regular exercise is good uh, to prevent that stiffness and that soreness uh, to keep those joints moving, um, because once you lose, um, you know, a certain amount of motion, it's tough to get that motion back. So really keeping the muscles strong to support the joints um, and, and maintain that motion um, is really helpful um, and then avoiding things that aggravate it so you know if it's you know walking long distances it's maybe walking short distances and taking breaks in between but avoiding things that are going to cause flare-ups of your arthritis um, and make those things worse uh, and then get you on medications and things to help control the symptoms so that you could you know enjoy and live the lifestyle that you want to live um, without being you know significantly in discomfort are there foods you should avoid or not or not avoid um, not uh, in terms of osteoarthritis, um, like Dr. Walker was talking about, like certain things with gout, you know, mm -hmm. avoiding certain things that might yeah. trigger a, a gout attack, um, certainly for that. Um, but in terms of, you know, uh, osteoarthritis, it's, not so much okay. dietary. Okay. And Dr. I agree. Walker? And I, I, the only thing I would really add is when you're talking about medications, there's a lot of over-the-counter medication options, but it's important to talk to your doctor to make sure you're not taking something that's doing more harm than good or combining medications you shouldn't combine. So there are medicines that you wouldn't think of, like you mentioned, antidepressants. Some seizure medicines are actually used right. for um, arthritis pain. So there's options out there and it's just having a good conversation with your family doctor usually is where you're starting. And what I, I think is neat, and I don't know why I never put the two together, but at doing rheumatoid, or um, uh, I'm gonna forget, yeah, to be a rheumatologist, I never, I don't know why I was thinking in an orthopedic uh, practice that was like its own, and I know it probably can be, but it makes so much sense to know the correlation between the two and how, how that actually works. Because you don't, to me, when I think orthopedic, I think broken bones and replay. I you just, I don't think arthritis and those other things. So yeah. it really is the perfect marriage. Yeah. I think it works well together because a lot of times, you know, I'll get a patient that comes to see me and they say, oh, well, both my knees hurt and both my hips hurt and both my shoulders hurt. And you look at their x-rays and their arthritis really isn't that bad. So maybe there's something more going on mm -hmm. there that Dr. Walker could take a look at and say, okay, well, it's not so much the, you know, destruction of the joint, but it's the inflammation okay. that's going on caused by, uh, you know, one of these autoimmune uh, inflammatory diseases that's causing you to have pain kind of all over the place as opposed to one joint that's just had an injury and developed wear and tear. So it really works well that, yeah. you know, we, and then when he has patients that have, you know, uh, kind of their rheumatoid arthritis, it has progressed to the point where, you know, they have continued pain and the joints really destroyed, you know, he sends those patients mm -hmm. our way to talk about joint replacement and the surgical side of things. I think it's neat. And has that is that more of a, a, a new thing, or has that been around? Like, not knowing that, I really had no idea, ex except I was telling you earlier about my fiance who saw one of your rheumatoid uh, doctors, and mm -hmm. or had, rheumatologist, I should say, and I didn't realize they were in the same it's in not this, as calm as you'd think. Yeah, uh, it makes I, sense, it, it, but, it makes sense but I was like, wow, I never, and I don't remember that years ago even thinking, I guess I wasn't thinking yeah. about arthritis then either, but yeah. you know, it's, right. it, it makes, it totally makes sense. And I didn't know if it was a new thing that just said, okay, hey, this marriage is great, or if it's been around and I just didn't pay attention. Yeah, it's not, it's not around a ton. But it makes sense to us, and, yeah, and that's no, why we do it because it, you know, it helps uh, all of our patients, you know, to be able to kind of provide that service I to, think it's great. you know, direct them in the right in the right direction. Yeah. So before we close, I told you, see, very quick, you guys were great, by the way. Tell, is there anything you want to tell the listening audience? What, um, anything else that I missed or that you think you need to make a point on that I didn't cover? The only thing uh, I think of is, is when you have joint pain, it, it's not something that you have to live with. And people think I'm not going to go see the doctor because I don't want a joint replacement, or you know, I don't, I don't want, want surgery. surgery. Yeah. Um, you know, there's I those people. yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there's lots of things out there that that we can do to help you to minimize your pain to get you feeling better, so you can you know enjoy your life and do the things you want to do. All right. That being said, if somebody really needs surgery and they recommend it, but you say I don't want it, can you help with them with something else? Absolutely. You know, okay. it, we may not be able to take that pain away completely, completely if your arthritis is progressed significantly, but we can help, you know, decrease it some um, to help minimize, you know, the amount of discomfort that you're in. Okay. 
And we're all in this for improving people's quality of life. That's mm -hmm. why most of us go into medicine and with all the arthritis and joint issues, you know, if you're complaining about something, it's an issue in your life. So, right. you know, we will work with you and it's not always it's not always surgery and it's not always medicine. There's options. So okay. I think just be upfront with your expectations and we'll help you when we can. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So again, I'd like to thank Dr. Jeff D Gillette and Dr. Chad Walker for being part of this series today. The, as I said, the fourth one. And the fifth one will be soon. It will be urological health, prostate cancer diagnosis and treatment. And joining me for that discussion will be Dr. John Farrell. Dr. Chris Peters and Dr. Don Priate. So that proved that's going to be a nice group of guys. A yeah. bunch of nice young guys again. Here we are. I love this job. Did I tell you to be with all these <laughs> handsome doctors? So thank you very, very much. Thank and you. Uh, keep up the good work. And you might, you never know, you might see me down there one <laughs> of these days. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Again, this, these uh, series have been sponsored in part by CHS and the Lackawanna Medical Society's, uh, I better make sure I get it right. I can't find it. I can't. You see how, do you see, now my notes are completely gone. <laughs> Public health series, education series. That's really it. Did you like my, Mark? Got it. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank and you. we'll All see right. you next week, uh, next month. So please listen and uh, we'll bring you more information. Thank you very much. I'm Laurie Cadden.